G'day, it's Presa. Thanks for stopping by. Now we're working on the Titan engine today and there are three parts that still need to be made for the engine and they are all to do with the fuel delivery system. So what we're going to do first is make the spray bar and it takes fuel from the tank and you'll notice I've got some silicon fuel tubing now. The spray bar also has a needle valve which screws into the spray bar and that regulates the fuel. There's also a small brass spring clip which keeps the needle valve set so it's not affected by vibration. So all of those parts are fairly straightforward to make but I did have to do a fair bit of design work on those because the build notes that I was given didn't have any details of the spray bar or the needle valve. So I've had to have a look at other engines of a similar size and type to get some ideas on what they look like and I also took some advice from some experts who've done this before me. So I've got the drawings and uh, we'll head over to the lathe shortly and make those parts. I also will need to at some point break this engine down completely and do a lot of deburring, a lot of polishing and there's some metal finishing that needs to be done. I'm planning to anodize the cylinder head, the spinner and the fuel tank. Now a lot of people uh, you know, advise me not to powder coat the fuel tank. I tend to agree with that now. I think the uh, anodizing will look better. It sort of preserves the clean crisp lines on those metal parts whereas powder coat tends to make it a bit well, it's a thick coating, so you tend not to see those details. So that's all going to be coming up, but not in this episode. So uh, uh, I've also fixed the issue with the display stand. You'll recall in the last video that was tipping over because of the weight of the engine. Some people suggested turning the engine around the other side, so swapping the position of the engine and the fuel tank. But I wanted it to appear as if the propeller could still spin through a full revolution, a full uh, 360 degrees. If I swap this part around, the prop would clash with the base. So I'll leave it as is. It's, it's now working as it should, but I'll show you the trick that I use there later. So what we're going to do is bore a hole underneath the base here and I'm going to put that lead plug right at the back there and then I'll cover that up underneath with a piece of felt. Problem solved. Oh and thanks to all the people who told me that I'll put the prop on back to front in the last video. <laughs> Got that fixed. I put some green painters tape on this side before I drilled that hole because this cedar is very very soft. But there's our lead plug now, that fits in nice and neatly. I did machine one side of that lead plug and then I've sanded that a bit as well just to try and get it level because we had to be careful that the lead was level with the wood base. When this is completely varnished I'll put a piece of felt over that and you won't know it's there. But that allows the motor to sit on a flat surface now without tipping over like it was doing before.
I was been waiting for the rain to stop, but it looks like it's not going to. It's this is the middle of our wet season at the moment, and we've had uh, rain most of the afternoon, quite heavy at times. And in a, a shed with an uninsulated roof, it gets a bit noisy. <laughs> So here's our spray bar. This is actually finished apart from drilling a cross hole which will form the jet which uh, allows fuel to go down the venturi. But we'll take this out now and as you can see there that's the connection for the fuel tube. This is where the, the actual needle valve will screw down into that spray bar. And I've got a four millimeter by 0.5 pitch thread on here. 
So this is what I'm using for the needle valve. This is two millimeter silver steel. It's been roughly ground to a point. And that's a two millimeter hole through the spray bar. And it goes in until it butts up against an internal passageway, which you saw me drill with that little tiny sensitive drilling attachment. And if that was pushed fully home, that would block all the fuel from getting into the cross hole. If we back it out slightly, we can regulate the amount of fuel that's going into the engine. So what we'll do now is we'll machine up the, the boss that fits over this threaded portion here. This is the stock that I'm using for the thimble of the needle valve. So this is going to be 16 millimeters long and uh, 3 eighths of an inch diameter. So roughly 5 eighths long, 3 eighths diameter. And it's a fairly simple part, but it will have the mating M4 thread on the inside of this part which will go over the threaded part on the spray bar. Just been waiting for the rain to die down, but now we've got thunder as well. <laughs> Uh, that's as much as I can do in the lathe at this stage. Now, what I need to do now is put a serration on these sections here. And I did try doing this with a knurling tool, but I've only got a very, very coarse straight knurl. And it's just putting too much pressure on, on the brass stock and just chewing it up. So I'm going to do this in the milling machine. I'm going to use a fly cutting operation to do the serration. When that's done, it'll go back in the lathe and we can chamfer all the edges and part it off. But at the moment, that's got the internal thread that fits over the spray bar. It's got the two millimeter hole for the, the actual needle valve itself. And I can show you that screwing onto the spray bar at this stage. Well, there's the engine with the spray bar fitted to it. And here's the needle valve. It'll fit through that two millimeter hole. And that's a, you know, a running fit there. And here's the section we just made. And it screws onto the threaded section of the spray bar there. So that's what's going to regulate our fuel. But what we need to do now is get over the milling machine and do this serration process. Okay, here's a drawing of what we're going to do. So we have to put this sort of uh, imitation straight knurl on both ends of this part. Now, you could do this by knurling if you had one of those sort of opposed scissor type knurling tools with straight wheels, but I don't have that. I don't have the straight knurling wheels or a pair of them anyway. So doing it this way is going to put far less strain on the part. If I was to do this with a single wheel knurling tool, it would put a lot of stress on the part and would almost certainly break through where this wall is very thin. So in CAD, I was able to work out how many grooves I would need and how deep they need to be. Here's a, a detailed drawing or an enlarged view of what we're going to do. So it's a 60 degree included angle, 0.4 millimeter deep, 36 grooves at 10 degree intervals, which is really easy to set up. Okay, this is by Spindex and I bought this last year, haven't used it yet, so this will be the first time. And at the same time I bought this, I also bought a 5C to ER40 collet chuck. And that means that I can put odd sized parts in the ER40 collets. I don't have a lot of 5C collets and if I needed a lot of them, it's just very expensive. This is a much cheaper way to go for me. So there's the part we just made on the lathe in the ER40 collet. 
and to cut that groove uh, or series of grooves in that part I've made up this little fly cutter. So this has got a half inch shank on it or it's actually 12 millimeters and I've got a broken six millimeter end mill uh, held with a grub screw at this end here and I made the 60 degree point there on my uh, D-bit grinder and ground away half the thickness of the cutter. So that can go up in the spindle of the bridge force. There it is. Alrighty, so what we need to do now is set the, the bottom of the cutter on the top of the part and then we can work out our offset to put the, the cutting point right on the very center line of that brass part. Okay, so what we'll do is bring the cutter down on top of that part there. I've just got a piece of feeler gauge stock there to see if I'm on that surface. Right, that's it there. So what we can do now is offset down by half the diameter of the cutter and half the diameter of the part. So we've got three plus four, so what's that, seven millimeters? And that will put us on the center line. Okay, that's seven millimeters there. And, um, I might actually bring this over the other side uh, and that way I can cut back toward the collet chuck. Okay, so what we need to do now is touch off on that part and then we're going in 0.4 and then we'll just cut out our 36 screws. So none of this is terribly critical. I've just taken the spindle out of gear. I'm just going to rock that backwards and forwards so I can feel a touch. Okay, that's just scratching there now. Alright, so we'll lock off there. Okay, away we go. Just need to check. I'm not going to hit my collet chuck here. It's going to go really close. Okay, well, it's sort of bad planning on my part, but I did have to push the part out of the chuck a bit more, and I've just reset the existing groove that I just cut with the cutter. I think I've got that right, so let's do the next one. Okay, I think you get the idea. I'm going to keep going. My battery in my camera is about to die, so we'll come back when I've got all those grooves done. We'll have a look.
Oh, there's the finished part. All the grooves were evenly spaced, which is a good thing. This needs to go back in the lathe now. We'll sort of chamfer these two edges here and this one. We'll partially part this off and then do those two edges as well. It'll need a bit of a, a clean up and sort of raise a bit of a burr there. But I think it's okay. Uh, the main thing I was after was to get all those grooves evenly spaced, which seems to have worked out really well. Anyway, let's get it finished. Well there's the finished thimble and as you can see this 2mm silver steel will fit right through that and with the correct taper on the end of that when we screw that into the spray bar that will completely block the fuel coming through into the venturi. So that's about as far as that goes there and you can slide that uh, silver steel in until you feel it butt up against the, the shoulder on the inside of the spray bar. So what I need to do now is to cut the taper on the end of this. Now I did do a drawing, just so you know that I'm thorough. There it is there. And I guess you could set this up in the lathe and if you were really lucky you could probably taper turn that. But at the end of the day it just has to be a bit pointy at the end. So I'm going to just use the bench grinder and cordless drill. That last step with the wet and dry was just to get rid of the grinding marks from the bench grinder. That's nicely polished now, not too pointy on the end there. And what that will do is fit all the way down inside the spray bar like so. And I'm going to mark this off and put a 90 degree bend in the end of the silver steel. And the idea is that when the engine's running you can adjust it by that knurled section or you can just turn the 90 degree bend. And of course uh, with the propeller on and the engine running and you want to do any adjustment you don't put your hand over the top of the thimble because that will put your fingers in the plane of the propeller. You come in behind and you can make your adjustments that way or you can turn that little 90 degree crook on the end there. So let me mark this off and bend it and then we're going to just soft solder the needle valve into the back of the thimble there. So we'll go and get this ground on the end. I'll do that off camera, we'll do the bend. So we need to get this soldered into that thimble now. I've got two little tiny chips of 60-40 soft solder sitting in some acid flux in the bottom of this container. And I don't want to use too much. Uh, I just want it to sweat around the outside of that silver steel pin. 
So I'm going to put some of this flux on the brass part and then we'll try and balance one of these close to the joint and then just heat it all up. So I've already set the length of this stick out here um, and that uh, allows me to fully close the needle valve when the thimble is threaded all the way onto the spray bar. So it's going to put some of that acid flux on that joint there. And what I don't want to do is to have this solder flow everywhere. I just want it to go around the joint. That should be enough. Everything is clean. So the important parts about soft soldering is you've got to have everything clean. Everything's got to be at the same temperature. And you've got to make sure the solder goes in. And we're going to use the heat of the part to melt the solder, not the heat of the flame. Yeah, just drop that one. Let's try again. That's why I made two. And that's probably too much, but we'll see how we go. I can uh, machine off some of this solder later on if I need to. So I'm just going to heat up the brass part. And there it goes. And yeah, that's what I suspected. <laughs> Got too much. But that's all right, I'll machine some of that off. Okay, well, I did get too much solder on there, but that uh, sanding operation, just get rid of the heat sanding on that piece of steel. It has polished up the solder. I'll see if I can get some of that off, or I don't know, maybe I'll just leave it there. But what we can do now is screw the needle valve all the way into the spray bar. And if I've been careful, the needle valve should completely close the jet of fuel coming through from the tank. And then, of course, as you adjust that back, you can change the mixture from lean to rich. So you can either turn it by the little handle there, or you can grab it at the back here and turn it that way. Now, uh, this video has gone on too long. Uh, I'm going to have to cut it off here. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I was really hoping to get the little spring clip made that goes onto this knurl section here. That's going to have to happen in the next video. Also, we need to drill the cross hole in the center of the spray bar so it's centered on the Venturi. That's a very, very small hole. It's going to need some very careful setting up. And uh, I also need to make the three hex headed bolts that hold the bulkhead mount onto the test stand. So all of that's going to come up in the next video. And then we'll have a look at breaking the, the engine down and doing a lot of the cleaning and the surface finishing on all of the parts. So that's all going to be happening in the next episode. And uh, please join me. Uh, I know. People are getting frustrated and they want to see the thing run but as you can see there's a lot of work in these little tiny parts and you've got to get them right so bear with me it's it's coming to a conclusion <laughs> okay Prezo signing out thanks for joining me today I'll catch you on the next episode cheers mm -hmm.